Gather around, everybody. Get your blankets, turn out the lights, and get a snack, because it's time for a very scary story. That was weirdly timed. This is Tiny Bunny. Apparently it's a good time for indie games, because this is also one of the highest rated games on Steam. It's a visual novel. But it's a visual novel where your choices matter. Every choice that I make is going to affect the outcome of this game, and determine... Well, something. I actually don't know much about the game itself. But think of it as a fairy tale. Maybe a cautionary tale. But a fairy tale nonetheless. About you, and me, and a tiny bunny. <laughs> that was very hot. Turn the volume up and put your headphones on. I think this is going to be a sensory experience. The wind clawed at my window all night long. It wandered the fields and howled like a hungry beast. An endless song weaved from all sorts of voices. Shrill, gentle, sneery, twined in the air. They were shouting and laughing and arguing about something. Someone was running through the snow while casting long shadows that would occasionally creep close to my bed. Our house had a mind of its own, the creaky old mind of a building that had seen a lot in its days and was seemingly trying to share its wisdom with the inhabitants. The lonely house faced the forest and the dark green thicket gazed back with its hollow eyes, rustling, whizzing, swaying back and forth. One could come out and stand at the edge of the forest to reassure themselves. There was nobody behind the crooked trees. Fuzzy silhouettes swaying in the wind couldn't possibly do any harm. It's just a play of light and shadow. Just a play. I knew it was my imagination. I was already twelve, after all. Still. Ooh. The only one that saw that. Did you guys see that? Hey, put away your book. How many times have I told you not to read at the table? It's bad for your health. Look at how swouched you are. Yeah, reading's bad, kids. Hide. Oh, whoops. Oh, wait, what? What? Oh. Oh, that was a choice? Stupid! I didn't know that was a choice. Olia. Olia. Oh, Olia. Olaya, Olia. O oh, had already finished her breakfast and was munching on some cookies. She was so enthusiastic she almost looked like your typical girl from commercials. You're not going anywhere until you finish all of it. I, on the other hand, was still trying to drill a hole in the plate with my eyes, as if it would make the porridge disappear. Hazy anxiousness welled up inside, all because of the previous sleepless night, the black forest around our house and the gloomy wind. The longer I waited, the colder the lumpy white substance became. It looked like a jellyfish from the Costo Odyssey. I love that show. We got a nerd alert. Sound the nerd alarm. I wonder how horrifying the bottom of the ocean is. Never mind, cancel the nerd alarm. This guy is totally relatable and I get what he's saying. Or how cold the black forest is at night. The spoon fell out of my hand. Mom showered me with a cold glare from her green eyes. What did I just say? I'll get it. I had ten seconds to catch my breath before battling the nasty porridge once again. What is this carved on the other side of the table? Karina. Hey, that's my mom's name. I guess she carved it out with something pointy when she was little. She sure was a rascal, damaging the furniture like that. I imagined her being my age, sitting under this table. I wonder, was mom afraid of the dark back then? I imagined my grandma coming into my little mom's room, sitting at the edge of her bed, where Olya sleeps nowadays, and saying this in her soft, smooth voice. Tiger is a special place, little girl. It's watching you closely, sniffing you out trying to discern what kind of beast you are. If you're a good sort, it won't abandon you in times of trouble. But if you're a bad apple, it'll grab you by the side and drag you under the ground. And that would be it. Grandma was caring, 
She never fought with anybody, never yelled, never swore. Those were the times without the maddening screams until late at night, without smashed dishes and mutual accusations. Our parents used to love each other back then. I remember listening in on one of their conversations by chance. They were talking about Grandma getting prepared for her funeral. She had already bought a casket. I know that feeling. And she called it her cute funeral box. It waited for its time in the closet, patiently. It was black, upholstered with meat-colored material on the inside. I saw it when my grandma was getting buried. The house didn't change since the time she was alive. Only all the photos were gone. I crawled out from under the table. Olya was done with her cookies and was looking at my share like a sly woodland critter. I turned my gaze towards the frosted window. Olya, look, it's a fox. Where? It looked almost like those optical illusion thingies they put on the back of student notebooks. Look, here's the nose and here's... Hey, eat up. Yes, yes, just a moment. Who talks to their mom like that? My dad entered the kitchen with long, measured steps. I want to have a beard like his when I grow up. Mom would always ask jokingly, Come on, shave it off, it stings. This was long, so long ago. Nowadays, rumbling doors and witty comebacks were an everyday occurrence. Olya always covers her ears when she hears something like, What's the point in all of this through the wall? I always caught every sound of fear of hearing the most dreaded, deadliest word that started with a D. D-I-V-O. I don't even want to finish it. It was scary to imagine that me and my little sister could be torn apart and taken into two different families. Anyway, your fox is nothing. I have an owl on my window. You and your owl talk again. You said you believed me yesterday. There was no owl. But there was one! It had giant glowing eyes! Well, you sprung up from the chair and placed her hands on her little face, imitating a pair of eyes with her fingers, the size of an apple each. Last year you had bye bye in your closet, and now this bye 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 bye. But I saw it. Oya shifted her gaze back and forth from her dad to mom to me, but couldn't find any support. Oya pouted her lips in rebellion and rushed into the hallway. The staircase that led to the second floor creaked. Mom gave dad a strict look. Oh, that look in her eyes. So uncomfortable to be pinned under it. A minute had passed, and the, th the theme song from The Little Mermaid echoed through the house. It was stored on incredibly worn-out cassette tape, which Dad already had to glue together once. It's so easy to fix objects, by gluing them back together, for example. But how do you fix a relationship? These are not the thoughts that a 12-year-old should be pondering. Oh, you had trouble sleeping ever since we moved to this house. She would toss and turn or curl up into a ball under her blanket. Sometimes she would jump up in the middle of the night and turn on the VCR. Cartoons helped to take her mind off the troubles we had with the move and our parents. And then Olya said she saw that giant flying monster outside her window. She became obsessed with it. Our parents did everything in their power. They tried every little trick to get rid of those ridiculous fears. Olya refused to sleep alone and didn't believe that the owl was just one of her nightmares. After tonight, I was unsure what to make of my sister's words, what to think of it myself. Can nightmares be infectious? Just last night, I couldn't get a wink of sleep and ended up thinking of what to expect in my new school. There were a couple of days left before the beginning of a new term. My imagination drew long, twisting hallways that led to a classroom full of kids. But all the students behind their desks were simply dark figures, cut out using a template. Circular holes gaped in the middle of their faces, and pairs of eyes blinked inside those holes. It was as if some completely different creatures were looking at me from behind the flat black silhouettes. Their cruel glares filled with icy sneers made me shiver from head to toe. Will I survive here? The damn school can burn for all I care. I just wish for anything to happen to it. Doesn't really matter what. I didn't want to go there that badly. I didn't want to see people who were just itching to smack me on the head, trip me up, think of a new offensive name for me, worse than the previous one. My gaze slid across the drawings hanging on the walls. I couldn't consider myself a great artist, but Olya begged me to hang them. Drawing was the only thing that made me happy as of late. 
The small circle of friends I had also enjoyed my paintings, and they promised to call me from time to time. Sometimes I imagined Bomb picking up the phone and saying in a cold voice, You've got the wrong number. Anton is not around. Anton's not around. Something was watching me from every corner, almost as if the old photos of my diseased family, with their ashen eyes, were hanging on the walls in place of my drawings. The floor was squeaky, rusty drains were moaning, the attic was occupied by noisy drafts. One could think the house was performing some sort of demonic melody, and then I realized I was in fact hearing music. It was already playing for a good while. Somewhere at the edge of my perception, I could hear a flute. It was mixed in with the sound of the wind of the creaking old house in my thoughts, too. I stood up and rushed to the window. I wanted to reassure myself that this music was nothing more than a product of my own imagination. Black silhouettes I could barely make out, with the dark forest as their backdrop. They jumped around, basked in the moonlight, bumped into piles of snow, rolled around and crawled on all fours. Stories about wolves playing under the moon came to mind, but these were clearly not wolves. They stood upright at times, circled around holding hands and whipping up snow, disappearing into the shadows for a brief moment, and then coming back. Something bizarre was going on. Shadows dancing in the starless abyss made my imagination go wild, made me anxious at the same time. Suddenly the music stopped, the dancing shadows froze in place, and I could swear, pierced me with their eyes. One of the silhouettes immediately parted from the bizarre shadow carnival and spread it across the field with giant leaps. I shut the curtains with a swift motion and stepped back towards the bed. Ooh. They saw me. A freezing torrent of fear washed over me. I stood in the middle of a perfectly dark room and listened to some unwanted guests move and scrape around. I jumped into the bed and covered myself with a blanket as if it could protect me. I remember the funeral. My grandma lying there, hands crossed on her chest, her facial features sharp like that of a tin doll. Ants running up and down the legs of chairs that held my grandma's casket. I imagined those little creatures climbing up her head and pulling up her eyelids with their tiny legs. Then her wrinkly eyeballs would once again move inside their sockets and she'd be able to see her grandchildren. And now, lying under the blanket and listening to squeaks and howls, I was repeating the same words. On the island of Bouillon, Underneath the blemished sun, in the sea of color blue, stands a cabin made of wood. There lay lard and ashen hair, for the spawn from devil's lair, to feast and always leave alone, God's faithful servant named Anton. Evil leave this house must, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Bizarre sounds had disappeared, and then the night doused me with a new portion of boiling terror. The sound scratched at my eardrums. In reality, something or someone was scratching at the front door, hurriedly clawing at the wood demanding to be let in. The door was shut. <gasps> the doorknob twitched. Slightly. Then it turned halfway. Once. Twice. As if the person who tried to enter had no hands. The doorknob tilted once more and then... Started clicking violently! My jaw cramped from fear. My wet fingers clutched the blanket. <gasps> the door creaked and opened. The wind taunted me, moaning inside the tin drains. Now, now you'll see. The darkness writhed inside the carnivorous mouth of a doorway. Tony! Tony? It was as if the night itself was calling out to me, flapping its black wings and squeaking with rusty hinges. I was trembling. Ensnared by the web of darkness that hung in the corners of my room, waiting for the one who weaved it to come out of the gaping black hole. Tony. Tony. My abdomen tightened and my chest rose up, ready to exhale a desperate scream. But before I was able to do anything, the darkness asked me, Tony, you asleep? My sister's pale face protruded from thick shadows. I almost screamed from relief. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm not sleeping. Did something happen? Well, you frowned and stuck out her lower lip, a clear sign that she was about to cry. It's there again, staring at me. Shoo her away, Tony, please. I'm so scared. 
The fear that was tormenting me just a minute ago crawled away and hid somewhere in my stomach. I needed to calm Oya down. All right, let's watch Cinderella. What was that? What studied me with its eyes while dancing feverishly under the moon? Tony, you coming? Yeah, yeah, just a moment. That's why I didn't want to laugh at Ole again or Owl in the morning. Oh, Ding Dong, hey! How you doing? Who could be visiting us here in the middle of nowhere? We don't know anyone around here. Bang Bong. So persistent. A couple of policemen towered over me in the doorway. Hello. The senior officer who wore a grim expression nodded. A boy had gone missing yesterday. His name's Vova. Look at this, please. Have you seen him? The policeman held out a photograph to me. I've never seen this boy in my life. There was a ginger boy around the age of elemin eliminatory school. No, I haven't. Are you sure? Look closely. Where would I see him? I don't know anyone around here. I barely leave the house. Well, maybe you've seen him from the window. That's right. Your windows look straight at the forest, don't they? The window. No, I haven't seen anything. I see. He sounded tired, but his eyes, his stare, long and heavy, was full of suspicion. Little boys like you should stay at home and steer away from trouble. Times have changed so much. Mom interjected in a cold voice. You don't say. Ah, well then. What grade are you in, Tony boy? Six. Have you met any friends here so far? Not yet. I'll be going to school for the first time after the break, and then I'll leave you my number, just in case. Call me, if you have any new info. I looked out the window at the road. The police UAZ drove off towards the village. The officer's nephew came to mind when I was splitting off old paint from the windowsill. Those delightful lead paint chips. So tasty. I noticed a trail of policemen's footprints that led into the forest, and then it clicked in my head. Why don't I start an investigation of my own? Maybe I'll find that lost boy, and I'll get a reward. Olya will be so happy. And not only Olya, mom and dad too. Maybe they'll even forget about their quarrels for a while. Maybe I'll even save us from the D word. I fantasized about buying Olya a Tamagotchi and getting her a cassette player and a bunch of tapes for myself. A whole box of Kinder Surprise. I couldn't wait to go out, look for clues. I'm going outside! Yeah, right. You want the police to go around with your photograph next? The forest is so thick. What if the boy got snatched up by wild animals? Or something even worse? Even worse echoed through the hallway. I won't go far. I'll stay away from the forest. Did you hear what I said, or should I repeat myself? Better go pack your school bag and play with Olya. The sound of splashing water came from the kitchen. It meant that the argument was over and mom had the last word. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so here's the thing. I know it's been a long interlude before I talk to you guys. I love this story so far. I'm super into it. I think it's great. But I'm not going to save ever. I just want to see where it goes. This is the first of five potential chapters for this game. And it's already off to a good start. Also, this game was free, I think. I may be mistaken about that, but editor confirm with me if that was actually true. Thank you. Let's open this. What is in here? The dark stuffy closet. Mom says it smells like mice, but how would she know their smell? She hates when I stick my nose in there. She's afraid I'll cut myself on the freshly sharpened axe. And I like to hide in the closet and listen to all you count outside. One, two, three, better hide from me. And then drag her feet on the creaking floorboards, hoping that she wouldn't need to look for me in the cramped monster's den. Hmm. Well... I think that I need to go to this investigation. I'm going out. I opened the front gate and went into the field, carefully so Mom wouldn't see me from the window. When I crossed half the distance towards the forest, the snow piles became as high as my knees. I remembered my nightly fears. In the light of day, those distant figures felt like a simple dream. 
The sun turned my nightmares to ash, but the aftertaste was still there. Distant ringing in my ears, distorted shadows crawling on the snow alongside me. And barely audible whisper in my head, blurry and almost kind. Everything was silent. So silent I felt like the world was totally empty. No ground, no sky, no Olya. I squinted from the sun and turned my eyes to the sunless forest. It looked especially dark in contrast with the blinding whiteness. Knobbly tree roots slithered under the snow like fat snakes. Rotten leaves and coniferous needles froze into the ice. Some object was hanging from one of the pointy branches. I tried to get closer, drowning in snow. And when I almost got to the edge of the forest, I saw a knitted mitten. It looked like a wounded bird among the hungry semi-dark. Should I take it to the police? Will this mitten help them find the lost boy? Vova. Oh. Someone was standing there behind the trees, hiding. Okay. There's no one there. Just branches and roots. It's all just my imagination. A nearby bird flapped its wings loudly. A shadow split from the tree and disappeared from my sight. I looked away for just a moment, but when I turned back, my gaze to the same place, it was gone. So it was my imagination after all. Silence reigned for a painfully long time. My muscles were tightly sprung. My heart was beating somewhere in my throat. Any noise, any little movement, any small whisper from the thicket and I'd sprint. But nothing of the sort happened. I looked at the mitten once more. I'm taking the mitten! I'm getting that mitten! I decided to take the lonely mitten from the branch. Ah! Ah! Over! Oh no! A shout rumbled across a field and dissolved into the distance. No echo. No hope for a reply. <sighs> oh, do I get it now? Oh. I'm going for it. I went in and budge. I pulled harder. The branch cracked and the mitten tore off, landing in my hand with a squishy sound. All too heavy. Wet. I squeezed it without thinking. Something dark spilled from it. Forming a tiny string between the mitten and the snow. Steam rose from the snow pile. I froze in place, studying my palms in disgust. Red. The sound of cracking branches invaded the silence. Ooh. I didn't have to think twice before running away. Someone was chasing me from the darkness, breaking pine branches, closing the distance with giant leaps. Snow was slowing me down. Crazy thoughts flew through my mind. I'll get caught. They'll get me. I'll get dragged into the thicket. I'll be gone forever. But there was one more voice. Probably one of reason. It gave me strength, spurred me on. You can do it, don't stop. I heard an animal roar behind me. It was so loud my ears went numb. It felt like the sound had come from a pack of hungry beasts rather than a single one. Their nostrils sucked in freezing air. They sensed my fear. Two giant wings flapped above my head. An enormous shadow flew over, glaring a hoot, a wheeze. The roars were coming from all directions now. From the dried up raspberry bush, from twisted pines, from under the windfall. Hurry, run, don't look back. I reached a clear path with one jump and from there ran to my house. Its gloomy facade didn't look threatening now. That house was my last line of defense from the shadows that flapped their wings and the creatures that were hidden under the snow. I tripped over the doorstep and smashed into the door. In all my hurry, I still managed to notice the claw marks, as if a dog was striking the wood with its paws, demanding to be let in so it could escape the cold. I hadn't noticed these marks when I was leaving. The heartbeat in my ear was much louder than my surroundings. I couldn't hear whether someone was following me or not. Drowning in fear, I pulled the doorknob and it obediently gave way. I rolled into the hallway and shut the door behind me. Mom peeked out of the kitchen and chastised me with the same frigid voice she always used when talking to Dad. What exactly didn't you understand when I told you to never slam the door? I, I didn't mean to. I snuck a glance at the door. The smell was gone. The breath was too. If there was someone in the first place, of course. Here, 
mere five meters away from mom, my fear was slowly weakening, melting like snow in spring. And with it, the last bit of strength I had left in my body too. My legs gave way. I propped myself up against the wall so I wouldn't fall over. Mom's expression had changed immediately. The cold mask of strictness and detachment was gone. Mom looked the same as before all those quarrels. Finally, she saw my condition. My wet pants plastered with snow, and she squinted her eyes in suspicion and looked into the front yard. Her expression changed in an instant, and she covered her mouth with her hand. Mom beckoned me with her finger, and I gathered all my remaining bravery to look into the kitchen window, facing my fear. I could barely discern some hairy silhouettes in the swimming in the snow through the icy winter patterns on the glass. Dogs? Well, some detective I am. In reality, I wasn't risking my life among monsters, but rather my pants among a pair of pack of stupid strays. And what for? What use do I have for this? Mitten. Of course. A darkened, sticky mitten that belonged to the lost boy made a squishy sound in my hand. Seems like I was clutching it the whole time. That's my trump card as a detective. I hurried to present this clue to my mom. Mom, look, this is Vova's mitten. That boy the police were asking about in the morning. It's drenched in blood. I found it hanging on a tree. I can show where. Let's call the police right away, like the officer had told us to. Mom, look, stop it this moment. Oya will go insane if she hears you. She already has trouble sleeping and whines all the time. And you joke around like this. At that moment, I realized the mitten was actually wet from snow. There was no blood whatsoever. I wanted to sink through the floor from embarrassment. Come here, my boy who cried wolf. Oh, don't just stand there. Come take your pills. A golden colored pill, reminiscent of a dead wasp, fell into my palm. Come on, take it or you won't be able to sleep at night. And you have school tomorrow. So I had to swallow the bitter medication drinking it down with some similarly awful water that gave off the taste of chlorine. Maybe it wasn't Vova's mitten. Maybe it wasn't a mitten at all. Just like the forest monsters. And Olya's owl. Am I going mad? What's happening to me? Either the pill had an immediate effect or my overexerted brain didn't let fear inside anymore. Serenity washed over me, bringing yawny indifference along with it. It seemed like the house had changed. The sofa's fabric became discolored. Fingerprints appeared on the bathroom tiles. The light bulbs also felt dimmer, yellower. A melody from Aladdin could be heard from the upper floor. Olya was done rewatching her favorite Little Mermaid episodes and switched to other tapes. Then I went upstairs. Jafar and Ziago's voices died down. I walked past Olya's bedroom and slipped into my own. Oh. Hello. Whoa. Whoa! The forest didn't look as grimy during the day. Grim, entangled tree branches in the distance in the snowy field between our house and the forest brought sleepiness to my eyes. You know, it's probably fine. It's probably nothing. Yeah, probably nothing. Fine. One of the drawers was empty. I hid the mitten there. I got a chovement. I sat on the bed. Only then I noticed... There was someone behind the curtains. My tired end dropped to the sheets. Whether it was due to the medication I took or the stress I underwent, the room began to contort, as if the wind was blowing the walls out like a pair of sails. The, corners, the room's corners bent and undulated. The only stable thing in the whole room was the figure between the windowsill and the curtains. A flimsy piece of cloth uh, was stuck to my hidden visitor. Just like a savant of sorts. Oh yeah? Who else would be standing there? I stood up and licked my dried lips. Yeah, oh yeah, it's so funny. I reached towards the curtains. But dum, but dum beat my heart, controlled by medication. The wind sang in the field with a chorus of voices. Plastic rings rustled against the holder when I pulled open the curtains. Gotcha! I knew it was you from the beginning. A blindingly bright halo lit up, lit up above Ahoya's head with the sun setting as a background. My sister was shining. I saw everything. Oh, really? What did you hide? Swear that you won't tell anyone, then I'll show you. Olya wore a plotting smile. I swear on Mom's heart. I know she remembered in one of the movies about the pioneers we watched. Don't say things like that. She was filled with curiosity that was splashing in her giant eyes. 
I opened the drawer and Olya leaned in, holding her breath. Is this someone's mitten? She said that as if she couldn't understand what she saw. A certain boy lost it and got lost himself. It must be really cold out there. Will they find him? They will. The police are going house to house search, showing his photo to everybody. And why are they going to houses and not the forest? Are they scared? The question caught me off guard. The police aren't scared of anything. Yeah, right, flashed in my clouded mind. She was piercing the forest with incredibly adult eyes and uncharacteristic for her. What if the owl got him? Nonsense, an owl won't be able to lift a human. But you know what? I was picking my words with utmost care. I forced them out of my overexerted brain. Stay away from the forest. I think it's, I think it's, how should I put it? It's cursed or something. Just like in a fairy tale? No, not like that. More like in that spooky tape mom and dad are hiding from us. Well, you giggled and tugged at my sleeve. Tony, let's go watch Aladdin. Fatigue won over my desire to be with my little sister. I was washed over by some sort of heinous apathy. I'm too tired. I don't want to. Come on. It's so boring alone and mom is always busy. We can pick a cartoon you haven't seen before. I know all of our tapes by heart at this point. Not all of them. You haven't watched Peter Pan. Remember how you fell asleep in the middle of it? So much happens after that. Let's go. Let's go. Maybe a bit later. I know. Let's play hide and seek. No, Olya. Then draw me a dino. Will you please? Draw it. Draw it. Will you leave me alone already? I blurted it out without thinking. And then I was immediately taken aback. I never screamed at my little sister like that. Will you stared at me in shock. Her lips started to tremble. A precursor to tears. Aww. I hurried to prevent Olya from crying. All right, you win. Let's go watch cartoons for a bit. I don't wanna. I came up to her, put my hands on her soft head. Let's go. Let's watch Peter Pan. Boo, you'll fall asleep again. I smiled and lifted her chin. Her eyes were wet and fell bottomless. I promise I won't. And I'll draw you a full triceratops later. Hooray! Triceratops. Well, good enough. Well, you rubbed her eyes with the sleeve on her pajamas and a shining smile returned to her face. I'll go ask mom for condensed milk and bread and you rewind the tape. The bread is fresh, just how you like it. All right, just be careful not to spill the milk or you'll be yelled at again. I want to bet I won't spill it. The tape is somewhere in the nightstand, look for it. Oh, you disappeared into the doorway and I dragged my feet into the neighboring room. Hmm. Got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> a scary window where all you see is that cursed owl every night, lurking in the dark. Oya keeps curtains open during the day, but as soon as the twilight comes, she shuts them tight so she wouldn't see the pair of hungry eyes outside. Sure. Puppy. The old photon TV was gathering dust in the corner. All that was left was clicking the button on the front panel. The two warmed up and familiar white noise started dancing on the black screen. I almost reached out to turn on the VCR when the noise calmed down and a blurry image appeared for a moment. What do you mean? It was the dark taiga forest, just like the one outside my window. The picture split the screen in half. Something creepily resembling human speech was coming out of the speaker. Just a few moments later, the scenery was again overshadowed by noise. Did it catch some rogue signal? Local TV station only really so showed Soviet cartoons, and even that was pretty rare. Maybe I should tinker with the antenna. What if I catch this channel again? On the other hand, will you ask me to find the tape? Wouldn't be nice to disappoint her. But in my sleepy state, I didn't have the strength to do all of it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, alright. Something strange going on here. She can find the tape herself. <laughs> oh no. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. The picture finally cleared up. But the moment I rejoiced at finding that weird signal again, the TV started coughing. A voice barely coming through the cacophony. He was often seen at the moment when... Small snowy hills were lined up on the screen, pierced with rickety crosses, and a male voice was narrating with a slow, mournful voice. It was a pitch black night at the cemetery, in that fateful dark time when little Senya met her fate at the face of a monstrous thicket dweller. The locals call him none other than the Forest Master. I froze and did my best not to move, as if by doing that I could scare away the narrator. I listened closely to his every word. The beast dealt with the helpless girl in a masterful manner. The camera panned across the snow with something black spilled over it, looking for ragged pieces of cloth that were thrown all over the place. 
I didn't want to think whether Senya's remains were wrapped up in there, so I shut my eyes without thinking. Oof, the voice continued. Wolves are rare guests in these parts. Oh, is what Tamara, the old woman that lives in the nearby crypt, had to say. A close-up shot of her face of a home, old homeless woman, weary from life and alcohol abuse, rattled on the screen. Yes, yes, such a fearsome beast it is. Worse than the rising dead. The old woman splattered saliva all over the rectangular mic. Who? And this stink. It's like... The rest of her comparison was swallowed up by the sound of a horn. I never felt anything like that. He was just standing there. Yes, right where you stand, boyo. And pierced me with its eyes. Right in the middle of the day. So huge, that one. With glassy eyes. Obscenities were covered by another beep. You know, they say if this demon lays its eyes on you, it'll snatch you, put you into his bag, and you're done. But he won't touch me. Likes me, it seems. So they even call me the Devil's Wench. And it's definitely true. The carnivorous monster will not touch those who fell to the level of forest beasts, going for the innocent child's blood instead. The Forest Master's presence is felt more and more on the outskirts of our country. Torn between believing in what was said and shrugging it away, I decided to record the remaining part of the documentary for some reason. I quickly grabbed the tape that was on top of the tape. Oh! And put it in the VCR without even looking at the cover. Oh! I bet that was Pete Pan! Oh! I re pressed wreck, turned to the sound up, and paid attention to the slipping signal. It's not called the Forest Master for nothing. All the animals obey it. Be they hairy or feathery, they're all precursors for its appearance. If you hear howls in the distance, then it most likely already knows where you live. If you find animal prints all over your doorstep, and birds watching from the trees, you better hide. It's already coming for you. And if you wake up at night and see a pair of eyes in your window, then soon... Soon. 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 Oh. Soon. Oh, God. Soon. Oh, God. Soon. 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 Oh, God. <laughs> the TV suddenly went mad and looped the last word over and over, piercing my ears. Woo! I got goosebumps all over my spine. The tape ended and was rewinding to the beginning. The sound of rusting t rustling tape reminded me of leaves in the wind and the low howl of the beast. I woke from my stupor and pressed the button. The VCR ejected the tape. For a moment I thought it was stained with saliva. But that was just the light from the chandelier making the black plastic glossy. Then I saw the cover. Oops. I recorded it over Peter Pan. Ah! I snuck a glance at the door. I could hear the clatter of glass and the squeaky floorboards. Olya appeared in the doorway. You haven't started without me, have you? My sister brought the tray with the unevenly cut bread and a whole can of condensed milk. Uh, no, I was looking for the tape. Do you really want to watch Peter Pan? I do, I do. Turn it on already. Mom will come watch her Brazilian drama soon. Come think it. Come on, think fake detective. You know, I didn't like Peter Pan. Maybe we should watch The Little Mermaid instead. I've already seen it so many times, and you promised me. She's so stubborn. I know. Let's watch a couple of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle episodes first. Deal? When you Olya frowned, but ultimately gave up. She put the tray down and crossed her hands on her chest. She wanted so much. Can you open the milk can? I'm afraid I'll cut myself with the sharp edges. Only when I reached the sofa, I realized that the can was already open. Olya had tricked me. Played me for a fool. My stomach became heavy. I wanted to rush towards the TV, but my little sister was faster. She picked up the remote and proclaimed in a victorious tone, Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. As the remote's master, I command you to watch Peter Pan. Uh-oh. Oh no. I couldn't even open my mouth and the VCR ate the accursed tape. I'd better tell the truth. Oh, you stop! I erased the end of your tape by accident. I'll trade it with you for two of mine. What do you mean? You couldn't erase it. Me and Dad had broken off all those plastic pins with a screwdriver. You can't record anything over my cartoons. My little sister pressed the triangular play button on the remote. I squeezed on the inside, awaiting the out-of-this-world voice of the narrator. 
but I saw the duel between Peter Pan and Captain Hook instead. I sighed in relief. My head, heavy as a leaden ball, now rested in my hands. Oya smiled in joy. She put the tape on rewind and started spreading milk over her bread. When the cartoon started, she forgot about everything in the world. As if she really got transported to the Neverland, like she always wished. To be honest, I also imagine myself there, in a land where one never ages, or where no one argues over little things, or no one listens to fights and the sounds of broken plates at night. We followed Peter Pan's adventures as if nothing had happened, as if the forest didn't kidnap kids, as if our parents weren't tearing each other apart bit by bit. Captain Hook was running away from a crocodile, and Captain Pan was headed to London on a gilded sailboat. By some miracle, I lasted longer than my sister. Olya's eyelids had drooped. She started snoring slightly, resting her chin on the side of the bed. The chorus was singing the ending song. The world of Disney was lit up by a silvery moon. <gasps> Another moon peeked from under the first one. Scary and wan, hanging over the Taiga Forest. The horrific report got recorded right over the credits. My throat went dry. My pulse became faster. I squeezed the remote with all my might, ready to press stop at any moment. I rewound the recording checked if it was intact, and carefully took out the tape. The protective pin was still in place. I stood up and left Olya's room. Whether it was by providence or by curse, I hid the tape alongside the mitten at the exact moment Mom peeked into my room. Enough playing around. It's your first day at school tomorrow. Go to bed. You should sleep properly. You don't want to be teased for being sleepy, right? I covered myself with a blanket up to my neck and listened to the house humming, to something invisible rustling in the corners. My inner voice had questioned for me, do I want to hear that mysterious flute again? Yes or no? The wind howled on and on in the night. My thoughts were like annoying flies that entered my head before becoming weak and tangled. I didn't notice how I fell into slumber. Well, good. Yay. Hey, true detective. That's, that's me. Oh. Oh. Well. There you have it. I guess. Damn. I liked that a lot. I really did. It was a nice change of pace to a lot of the horror games that I've been playing lately. Really delightful. And also just like, I really like the art style. The art style is super cool. I love, I always love this like, painting effect, this kind of style. This is really nice, really nice stuff. So anyway, that is Tiny Bunny episode one. Really a lot of good work going on here. Some pretty cool stuff. Can't wait to see what's coming next for it. Like if there's gonna be apparently five episodes of this and you know, it's pretty cool. So thank you everybody so much for watching. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below if you want to see more of this when it comes out. Try to support the developer. Download this game. Tell friends about it. I want to see more of it. I want to see how this story pans out. So thank you. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!